Hi, welcome back to Pear Tech Talk. Today I thought that we should take a look in how to incorporate an SD card into any microcontroller that have SPI interface. So I thought that we should do a, th a thing with this and uh, hope that you find it interesting. Tag along. So to do this project we need to have something that can accept an SD card and that is an SD card that we can find on Amazon and it's very cheap for instance and you also need some more uh, dependencies you need some libraries to drive the file system on it so we will use the fat uh, fat file systems uh, that is a very commonly used uh, system to drive them uh, the file system on the card Besides having the hardware needed, you also need some software. And I found a, a guy called Hammond Pierce, or Dr. Hammond Pierce, who made an excellent port on uh, the FAT FS. And he made also it's available for us on GitHub. So please take a look on his, on his excellent work because we will be using that in this application altogether. I will be running it on the STM32 uh, Nucleo board for the G491 board. And there is actually one tweak that needs to be done, to, uh, or which I choose to do on this board. You can do it otherwise as well. But the, one of the pins is driving the LED that I would like to use in the SPI interface to have all the pins nicely together here on, on the Arduino header. And that is a small resistor that needs to be taken away, and that is called the SB6. That is a small uh, uh, resistor there, a zero ohm resistor that you can just remove, and then you will uh, release the LED from that SPI pin, and you can use it in, in this application. So we start by creating a new project. We go with File, New, STM32 Project. Then we go under board selector and select what hardware we do have. And we give it a name. We clear all pinouts. So we have a clean sheet. And we go on the clock configuration and we change the bus clock to 64 megahertz. That is enough for this project. And under system core we select Sundesys. We can enable the serial wire debugger. And then we go under connectivity. We can first of all start adding the USART so we have some debug information for us. And we just enabled with asynchronous the UART2, and we have the correct board rate. We don't need to do much more there. Then we go under SPI1, and then we enable the full duplex master. And uh, we just give us a bit more room here. So the, what we need to change here is the data size. We need to change it to 8-bit, and we also need to change the prescaler of to a uh, highest version so we get between 100 and 200 or 400 kilobits per second because that is what sd card need for initialization sequence uh, after that it can be changed to higher free, uh, get the bit rate but for the initialization it needs between 100 and 400 kilobits the polarity is important keep it low and the phase clock is one on the edge what we then need to do is to enable the FAT file system. So we go under FAT file system and we click the user define. Uh, there we don't need to do anything, we just need to enable it and that is fine. The chip select, uh, in my case I, I opt for using the PB6. So if we just search for the PB6 we will have that blinky there. And we can click on that one and select it that GPIO output. And uh, then we need to configure that one. So we go under GPIO and we have the PB6 there. And we can give it the name. And we give this P sorry, SPI1 ship select. 
and we need to also drive it high from initialization because uh, the SPI is active low so I would like to have it um, on high and I also put a pull up on that one like so and we can also put pull ups on the SPI interface I'm not sure if that is crucial or needed but uh, we do it anyhow So then I think that we haven't forgotten anything, so we create a project. The project has been created for us and we try to just build it. And it builds without errors or warnings. Now we need to go to uh, Hammond's uh, GitHub page. So here we have the GitHub page from uh, Hammond. He calls himself Kiwi for some reason. Uh, it says Kiwi Hammond Pierce. Hammond Pierce, Kiwi. Uh, so what we can do then, we can download a zip file to our drive. So when we have downloaded the zip file and we have uh, unpacked the files, we can see that we have the project here and we have then the file fat system. And under the target, we have the files that we would like to use in our project. So if we open our project here and we have the file fat system and we go on the target, we can see that we have three files. And in here is five files. We have the ffconf, uh, we have the user disk io.c and user disk io.h. Uh, but these two files we don't have, so those two we need to copy. Like so. And we need to make changes also in the uh, user disk io.c and there are, I will make all the changes and if you don't want to do the changes on your own, you can just download my zipped file and uh, from GitHub where the project is complete, where you can just download the kit. Then we open the core and under includes and open the main h file. Uh, there we can copy this one for, for, for future use because we're going to use that include file. But we go down here on the private defines. And I used the SPI 1. In uh, Hammond case, he used the SPI 2, so we need to change that one. In here, in under the user disk io underscore SPI dot C, here we copy in the correct HAL file that we use on the microcontroller. And we disclude that one. And uh, we tried to build the project and then there were some errors and uh, we come back here why there was an error because we have define ship select high and in Hammond's case he wrote them as uh, these, uh, these ports and the pins and they are not correct in our case. So we go on the main C and we look for the GPIO initializations uh, sequence. 
So here we have the um, uh, GPIO initialization and here we have the correct port in our case. So we change that port and we go back and to have the correct pin as well. And we copy those two to the line below. So SPI is ship select GPI port and pin. Now we try to build it again. Ah, sorry. Now that problem is gone. Now there are some other issues that we need to look into. Okay, so after some uh, debugging here, I found that I made some errors uh, because it's looking for the SDSPI handle and I thought that I declare that in the main H, but I misspelled and hand le. Now we make a new try. Yes, much better. That is what we like. So the devil hides in the details. So uh, just to twist two letters is uh, crucial for it. So it compiles. Now we need to also incorporate some changes to the main C file. So we take all this piece of code that he written under the uh, user code 2, section 2. And it begins with the printf statement that there is an SD card demo. And uh, it will output something like this when we are done and if we are successfully. So this is what we are looking for and hoping for. So we try to build it and see if there is any errors. And there was one warning, but there was no errors. So what we can do now is uh, connect to... So this is how it looks on the board when I have connected the SD card to the nuclear board. Okay, so now we try to debug it and hope for the best. So we debug. And I also inflicted or took in a uh, Terratom here so we can see the output on the debug. So we can just clear the screen. <coughs> so now it's verified successfully. We hit run. So this was a success. It says the SD card statu state status, how much was available on the drive. And it was able to open the test.txt that was on the card and it was already FAT32. A fat, not fat 32, sorry, it was a fat uh, formatted card and there was a small text file called test.txt and it was able to read the string from that test pulling it to txt that just, uh, it just said Pia Tech Talk on that one. And then it also was able to write text for writing. So there is a new file on the memory card now and it wrote 16 or 19 bytes to the right point txt. 
So now I have removed the SD card from the development board and put it in my PC. And if we open the test point TXT, we can see it says PR Tech Talk, like it said, like the, there. And then it's what able to make a new file called write.txt, and that is this file here. And it wrote 19 bytes to that one, and we will look into what it did write in there. Uh, so now it says write.txt, a new file is made. So it created a new file and uh, put some information in that one as well. So now we know how to store files on an SD card on a project. I might build upon this in a coming video, so stay tuned for that. If you're not a subscriber, please consider to do so. And if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.